the 15th U.S. Africa Business Summit, hosted in Gaborone, Botswana, welcomed several heads of states, government officials, and key industry players to strengthen economic ties in both regions. While the main plenary sessions addressed some key issues facing, amongst other, challenges and opportunities in trade, the breakaway sessions presented countries the chance to invite delegates to explore key investment areas. Namibia was one such country that used this platform to do just that. Africa's role in global trade has grown at an accelerated rate over the past decade. However, Africa's overall contribution to global trade still remains very low. In addition, Africa's share on intracontinental trade is less than 13%, compared to close to 50% in North America, 53% in Asia, and almost 70% in Europe. These statistical data indicate the disparities that have immense implications on the development and integration of Africa's value in global value chains. Such implications are thus felt in terms of limited specialization, especially when we come to the economy of scale and the competition and the technology diffusion. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, it is important for us to outline the key results and recommendations that I believe will ensure a viable outcome in terms of integrating Africa fully into the copper value chains. Deputy President of Namibia, Dr. Nongolo Mbumba, took to the podium to expand on key sectors investors can focus on. In the realm of oil and gas, the discovery of vast reserves by international companies, namely Total Energies and Shell, has catalyzed a new dawn for our country. These reserves, once fully appraised and eventually developed, will contribute meaningfully to our economy and will form a cornerstone in our strategy to alleviate unemployment and income inequality among our people. They have also opened up vast opportunities for investment and value chains that are awaiting to be exploited. That's why you are here. Turning to new energy, Namibia's unique geographical attributes place us at a significant advantage above many other countries. Our land is touched by the sun on average 300 days in a year. And our coastline is blessed by constant winds. When you come there to fly, you will experience it. With the signing of the feasibility implementation agreement with hyphen hydrogen energy to produce green hydrogen, Namibia is effectively harnessing, harnessing our natural resources to contribute not only to regional energy e equity, sustainability, and security, but also to the decarbonization of our planet. As I mentioned earlier, Namibia is a land of vast potential that offers trade and investment opportunities in multiple sectors beyond just energy. From tourism, mining, if you like lithium and cobalt and other things, agriculture, if you like grapes and meat, agro-processing, transport and logistics, among others. A key objective for Namibia is to leverage the existing capital-intensive industries to set the basis for productive diversification towards industry that can employ more people. I would like to reiterate that Namibia is open for business and we are inviting investors 
who are interested in exploring the available opportunities for shared economic growth. I hereby further emphasize that Namibia's government's unwavering commitment to creating a conducive environment for business to flourish. We are doing this by removing legal, both legal and administrative impediments and ensuring that our trade and investment landscape remain fit for the purpose. Africa is full with unlimited potential and unmatched resources. These are the words that summarizes the keynote address of the Deputy President, Dr. Nongolo Mbumba. Panelists from the private sector was asked to join the investment presentation to discuss the opportunities and the challenges in investing in Namibia for inclusive economic growth. One key area which form part as a main attractive industry is the energy sector, specifically hydro energy and the joint ventures with foreign investors. The fact is that definitely they need to be a more uh, deliberate and cohesive uh, understanding between uh, all parties including the policymakers. So for example in the experience that we had uh, there was a deliberate indication by state uh, through ECB that 30% should be uh, locally uh, uh, owned and and if one had gone uh, further beyond that and said, okay, not only that the shareholding should be 30% locally owned, even the value addition of that should be uh, uh, locally owned, then I think there would have easily been a, a meeting of minds uh, between the international players there and, and the locals. Uh, but once it is left open-ended, it becomes a bit difficult. I think like my colleague, Mr. Conrad Dency said, it is, the miners are not the best uh, uh, sort of uh, value adders. And it, the sim similarly to, to uh, producers, I mean a developer that we worked with, their interest is really to produce uh, as much capacity or energy as possible and then in, and basically get a return. So the moment you, you bring other elements, it requires I think more deliberate and, 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 and cohesiveness between the, the parties. Uh, so our experience, we have rea we, we realized that it created quite a big industry. I mean, the energy sector at that time, especially the renewable space, was not owned by locals. You know, I think as when you look at incentivization, of course, um, there's a number of uh, or, or various ways you can look at it. Of course, there's fiscal incentivization, which as a as a policy we're not um, we, we're not driving at the moment, but that's not necessarily something that might, might not change in the future. But at the same time, when we compare ourselves to our competitive countries around us, um, you know, there's um, a great deal of uncertainty and stability in many of these markets where really important uh, primary materials come from. Um, and Namibia is really that safe haven, both uh, financially, politically, but also, um, of course, from a rule of law point of view that really protect um, uh, investors and, and, and their investments. So I think so, so the strategy at this stage is, is really to create that, um, uh, you know, very positive um, um, operating environment for investors to work in. Um, of course, a lot of effort is going into that to streamline processes to make it even easier, um, like uh, Milangula said earlier, uh, for investors to come on shore um, develop their projects and of course um, if there is value addition to be to be had for us then to potentially work with that investor uh, to ad identify other developers to to do that I think perhaps one area where we kind of fell short before was not necessarily from an investment promotion point of view really targeting um, uh, you know value addition companies or, or the value addition set or value chain in particular mm -hmm. but that has changed and I think so in, in the work the NIPDB and our colleagues at MIT has been doing over the past two years that has been um, really one of the one of the, the efforts we've been making is actually to to work with value addition um, uh, organizational value addition companies and and uh, and developers of projects like that mm -hmm. Um, even even this morning, we've had um, an engagement with a number of these companies, really in regards to projects that they're considering for Namibia. And it's a question of 
how do we work together um, you know, within government as and, and speak and act as one government, but also at the same time work with our partners in, in the Namibian private sector to, to bring these companies on board and um, to uh, create that safe haven um, to operate in. You know, one often gets so stuck on the infrastructure side, but if you look at the host of opportunities that was listed, um, you know, there's a couple of really exciting things that excites us even more than infrastructure. I'm, I'm going to come back to infrastructure now. Um, but if you just look at um, the graduate endowment that we have in Namibia, we have, a, we have an excess of graduates at the moment, which is a, it's a problem on the one side with unemployment. But on the other side, there's so many countries in this development phase who have a shortage of graduates. And, and we think for us there's a, there's a massive growth opportunity in that that we see in the market. Um, and then, uh, you know, earlier we spoke about how oh, Namibia is such a wonderful place to come and live and work uh, with our graduates. Um, you know, uh, Honorable uh, Ipumut spoke about the land of milk and honey. And then uh, His Excellency spoke about the harshest desert. Now, now, somewhere in the middle is this wonderful place that we call Namibia. Um, and uh, I think with that, you know, you, you combine this development pipeline, you combine this infrastructure pipeline, you take the endowment of, of, of qualified graduates we have, um, and the combination creates a great flourishing business environment. Um, you know, we, when you look at infrastructure, we've um, we created a fund about three years ago, an infrastructure fund, um, and you know, we work with the likes of, of you know, Harith as well, to, to crowd in local and international capital um, so when you look at these opportunities in Namibia, it's, it's actually quite easy to invest into them. You know, the, the capital markets are developed. You don't have to you know, go and know everybody on the ground and try and figure out where is an opportunity. It's an it's a easily invest, uh, investable, accessible economy. Um, and, and then you, know, you combine that with some of the current um, legislation coming through um, and yes, everybody always wished that you know, everything in policy and, and all of it happened 10 years ago, but um, the current direction, <coughs> combined with what I just mentioned, um, you know, it's a lot to be excited about over the next decade if, if you look at Namibia with a pure investor lens. The Namibia investment session was soon closed off with a memorandum of understanding between, between Namibia Investment and Promotion Development Board and their counterpart from Botswana, the Botswana Trade and Investment Corporation.